My name is Vladimir Mironov. I am from Medical University of South Carolina. I would like to talk today about organ printing as a future of rapid prototyping in tissue engineering. We defined rapid prototyping as a computer-aided robotic layer-by-layer -layer additive biofabrication of functional living human organ construct. There is a huge market for tissue engineering organ. The shortage of organ for transplantation is an urgent problem of clinical medicine. And our calculations demonstrate that even if the cost of tissue engineering kidney, for example, will be $250,000, it still will be cost effective and save money for healthcare providers. It improve and save human life and create fantastic potential for the build, for building new industry. And market only for kidney is $25 billion. Bioprinting can be divided on three main steps. It's pre-processing, processing, and post-processing. In pre-processing, the goal is to create blueprint, a computer aid design of organ in a STL file. Uh, second step is processing, which you combine bio-ink or self-assembling tissue spheroids with bio-paper or bioprocessable biomimetic hydrogel, put this together and buy a printer and create tissue engineering construct. And the final step is post-processing or accelerated tissue maturation in perfusion bioreactor when we use maturogen and non-invasive, non-destructive biomonitoring and create functional tissue construct. There is already a lot of variant of bioprinters. There is inkjet printers, Faber, bioassembly tools, bioplotters, and you can see two variants of our bioprinter developed together with uh, Nitco company in Toronto on a lower panel. The fundamental principle of uh, organ printing technology is uh, tissue fusion. If you take tissue spheroids and put them close to each other, because of their viscoelastic character and also because uh, of surface tension, they will fuse and create structure of another level. During 2003, we introduced our concept and you can see in 2009, we already accomplished uh, most of our goals. We create large diameter vessels, intermediate and uh, small vascularized uh, model. So the next goal is to create human organ. How we can create a uh, human organ? Let's say that we have three type of tissue spheroids. One is uh, smooth muscle cells, green with endothelial cells. One is uh, unilumular vascular spheroids. Again, red is endothelial cells, green is smooth muscle cells. And one is histotypical spheroids which also contain endothelial cells and, let's say, liver cells. Uh, if you put them robotically, you can create large diameter vessels. You can see picture D. Then you can create intermediate E and also vascularized block F. And if you print all this together, then you can create three-dimensional tissue construct, which, is ha which has built-in vascular tree including large diameter, intermediate diameter uh, vessels, and capillaries. Before I go to the second part of my talk, I want to say that it's very difficult to predict future. But uh, we decided to propose law of tissue engineering, or some kind of uh, law of evolution of tissue engineering, or T-evolution. First law states that if ontogenesis is a, a recapitulation of phylogenesis, then evolution of development of tissue engineering product is also recapitulation of phylogenesis and ontogenesis. The second law states that progress in tissue engineering will depend on how quickly we can switch from using synthetic biomaterial to using living 
natural tissue as a biomaterial and building blocks. And it's also, it was already suggested to consider tissue spheroids as a biomaterials. Next law states that progress in tissue engineering will depend on how quickly we can switch from bioprinting in vitro to bioprinting in vivo. And in an international conference in Bordeaux this year in France, it was first presentation which actually demonstrated that in vivo bioprinting is feasible. Next law states that progress in tissue engineering will depend on how quickly we can switch from top-down or solid scaffold-based approach to bottom-up bottom or self-assembly-based or modular approaches employing scalable computer-aided automated robotic biofabrication system. And you can see that uh, some groups already employ this idea of modular bottom-up tissue engineering. Next law state that progress in tissue engineering will depend on how quickly we can evolve from analog continuous bioprinting to digital or droplet bioprinting. We just recently switched in the United States from analog TV to digital TV and uh, the paper cited below demonstrate that the same process will be eventually done in bioprinting and it's logical to assume that digital bioprinting is superior technology as compared with uh, analog bioprinting. And finally, last law state the progress in tissue engineering will depend on the effectiveness of adaptation and incorporation of novel technologies developed outside of the traditional tissue engineering research domains. It may be many different technologies and it's actually fit to concept of uh, technology which is recently published by Brian Arthur, who also said that adaptation, knowledge and technology from different domain, this is the mechanism how technology evolves. Of course it's very difficult to predict the future and how one of the visioners of uh, computer industry, Alan K. State, the best way to predict future is to invent it. And that's exactly what we try to do when we want to build organs. In the end, I want to acknowledge uh, funding. We have 5 million NSF fiber grants. We have uh, 20 million NSF research infrastructure improvement grant. And we have seeding grant from MEOC for bioprinting research centers, which is now uh, evolved into advanced tissue biofabrication center. Thank you for your attention, and if you have more questions, don't hesitate to contact with me. My email is mironovv at musc.edu. Thank you for your attention.